Hi and welcome to the Radar Room. Rather than just do a news update this time, I wanted to share a few thoughts on the Israel-Hamas conflict and just try and think a few things through with you all. The reality is there are two things going on. Hamas are hiding behind a civilian population, human shields, and Israel are still attacking, which means the shield will take a hit. And I think it's very important to discuss and consider the morality of all of this. If somebody uses a human shield and another person still attacks, who is in the wrong? And I don't think there's very easy answers to any of this. Human shields are a very underhanded strategy, but they're also a very effective one as we've seen. If it causes your enemy to hesitate, then you're able to go without being attacked. You can regroup, you can plan ahead, which is most likely what Hamas were hoping would be the case. I don't think they expected the response that Israel's given. But on the other hand, if the enemy does attack, well then you can say, look at what our enemy has done. Look at the innocent lives damaged. Whereas it was you that put them in the middle. But yet the enemy certainly looks bad. So as a strategy, well, it is downright evil, but it is also effective. And we are seeing that play out in the media at the moment. In that situation, who is responsible for the deaths? Israel is in a very difficult position here, one where every action or inaction will be a problem for them. They either respond or they do not. Both of these options have huge problems. We need to appreciate the effect that the attacks on the 7th of October had on this, the, the psyche of the nation of Israel. It was a devastating terrorist event. 9-11 is a good comparison. Although when you take the population size into account, it is actually so much bigger than 9-11. Look at how America responded after that. They did all they could to remove the aggressor. Israel finds itself in a very similar situation, except it isn't with a nation on the other side of the world, it's next door. That immediately changes the immediacy of the danger posed. If they don't respond, Hamas regroups and will attack again. Have no doubt about that. The October the 7th attacks will be repeated and they will continually get bolder. They'd get daring and more and more so each time. Hamas has said they want Israel to be eradicated and that will only stop, they will only stop when that happens. You can't negotiate to a halfway point when the other side simply wants you not to exist. So not responding is a bad option. Responding also has its problems. Benjamin Netanyahu has said that he aims to wipe Hamas off the face of the earth. Now bear in mind what that means. That is not the genocide of removing a people group from the earth. At no point has it been said eradicate Palestine, but Hamas. In other words, the terrorist organization. That's the goal. Just like America tried and ultimately failed to take apart the Taliban. Hamas are hiding behind people. That makes the whole operation a no-win scenario. Just look at the situation with Gaza's Al Shif hospital. A hospital is off limits in the rules of war. 
An attacking force, in this case Israel, must not attack a civilian hospital. To do so is a war crime. However, if the defending force is using the hospital as a military base, then that is no longer the case. It's a war crime for the defending force to do that and then the hospital is then no longer off limits to the attacking force. But regardless of that, it's a hospital, there'll be sick civilians in there. The recent release footage from the IDF seems to indicate that this hospital was being used in that very way, a military operation using human shields. This seems to indicate that there are indeed military tunnels beneath this hospital. I say seems because of right now this has not been verified and of course there is a burden of proof that needs to be applied to that, but the evidence does seem compelling, as does the footage of the hostages getting taken into hospital. So in that scenario, what is Israel to do? Who is responsible for the deaths? Well, I'd suggest it's the one who put them in the middle of the situation. Has Netanyahu always done the right thing? Has he taken due care and attention that civilian casualties are minimized? Well, probably not. I'm sure mistakes have been made. Even in Israel, there are people protesting his tactics. But we need to appreciate the extremely difficult position that Israel are in. You can win the physical battle and lose the propaganda war. And one thing that certainly seems certain at the moment is that the support for the pre-Palestine movement has done nothing but grow in recent weeks. Would that have happened if Israel had responded with less force? Maybe not. But at the same time, Hamas are still sending rockets over into Israel, still making plans and still have hostages. There are no easy answers here. It's all very well for the UN to call for a ceasefire, but to be honest, that's just posturing. The UN has no real authority to make that happen. Nobody has even suggested sanctions against Israel if it doesn't happen. It's nothing but an empty gesture because people would rather be seen as doing something than nothing, even if that something is actually nothing. It's the same with the Labour Party and the pressure that's on Keir Starmer. He has called for a humanitarian pause, in other words, time for people to get away, whereas the party's calling for a ceasefire. A ceasefire is different to that. It is a halt in the fighting altogether which would actually simply allow Hamas to regain strength and then we find ourselves right back at square one where all of this before this began. Calls for a ceasefire and the resignations that have taken place within the Labour Party, it all sounds very noble, but again, it's political posturing. It's not as if the IDF will suddenly change their mind if the UK opposition party suddenly have one voice on the matter. Why am I sharing this? Well, I really want us to think things through carefully. See, prayer, I believe, should be well considered. It's very easy to emotively respond to issues like this and have this instant response on both sides of the argument, but we should be thinking this through properly and battling with those moral implications. Because when we say we support Israel, we need to be prepared to defend why to people who are becoming increasingly hostile to that opinion. We need to understand why we support. When someone uses a human shield, I'd say both parties bear a responsibility towards that person, that shield. But if the person is hurt, then the blame, to me, seems very much on the person who used them as a shield. Please continue to pray. Pray for those who are suffering. Pray for those who are making decisions. 
prayer civilian, prayer civilian casualties will be minimized. Prayer for the hostages. And pray we will soon see an end to this conflict. Father God, I just pray. Lord, I pray you give wisdom to those in power in Israel. That, Lord, their tactics won't be inconsiderate, Lord, of the people who are being used as human shields. But, Lord, I pray you give them wisdom in how they go about. Lord, we pray, Lord, for those hostages. That, Lord, they will be returned to their families. We pray, Lord, for an end to hostility. For you are the one who causes wars to cease throughout the whole earth. So, Lord, we come to you. We know we don't have the answers. But we know you do and we trust in you, Lord. Help us today. Amen. Amen. Well, we'll continue to share updates as this all goes on. I'll try and do a few more more fact focus and news updates. I just wanted to really just take the time to think this through and talk this through. I realise I might not have come up with particular answers, but uh, I think it's important that we consider what we're praying through. Because our prayer should be based in what's going on and not just how we feel things are going on. Bless you everybody and uh, have a good day. I'll see you again soon. God bless.